Hello and welcome to Signal University's presentation of what is a cell booster? We're going to show you what a cell booster is, what it isn't, and why you might be interested in putting one in. In order to understand cell boosters, you have to understand the entire cell system. It starts with cell towers that are operated by different carriers. They're connected to landlines. That's right. The landline system is a very important part of the cell booster system. And from there, they go to network centers operated by your cell phone carriers sent to other cell towers, and that's how calls are made. Cellular technologies are different from different carriers, and they're different between voice and data. If you're talking about voice technologies, you're either on GSM, which is AT&T and T-Bombal, or CDMA, which is Verizon, Sprint, and some of the other carriers. Don't worry, you don't need to understand these acronyms, just know that they're there. If you're using data, you're either using a 3G technology, and believe me, there are about a half dozen of them, or you're using LTE, which is the new fast, what they call 4G internet. There's also AWS, which is not a technology, but instead a different set of frequencies that are used for LTE so that you can get faster cell internet no matter where you are and how congested things are. A cell booster has two parts. There's an indoor booster, which has an antenna that communicates with everything inside. And there's an outdoor antenna, which connects to the towers on the outside. That's the magic. There's an outdoor antenna that pulls all the signals inside, and it's much bigger than what you'd normally have on a cell phone. That makes it more sensitive. The two communicate back and forth, back and forth, and that's how the magic happens. You might be asking yourself how a cell booster differs from a cell tower or a microcell. Good question. A cell tower communicates directly with the telephone system. It's wired in at a very basic level. A microcell is used where there's no service at all to give you service by connecting to your local phone line or to the internet. A cell booster doesn't need a phone line or internet connection to work all it needs is a good cell signal on the outside of the house or building, and it will give you good cell signal on the inside. There are two kinds of cell boosters, those that boost voice and those that boost voice and LTE data. Regular voice boosters will boost 3G data, but most people don't care about that. Why do you have two different kinds? Because there are different frequencies that are used for cell phones. There are actually nine different frequency ranges, but we kind of condense them into five to make it a little easier to understand. If you've got voice service only, you're using either the 800 megahertz or 1900 megahertz bands. And once you add LTE or AWS service in, you're using all five of these bands. That's important to know because if you do have a booster that only boosts the voice bands, you'll get no benefit at all from the LTE bands. When cell boosters first came out, the big concern was that there was going to be feedback. Feedback happens when the broadcasting antenna and the listening antenna can hear each other and they send a big screech, a digital screech, back to the cell tower. You've seen this happen with microphones. Now imagine if it happened to the entire cellular system. That could be actually very dangerous. That's why cell boosters have complicated anti-feedback systems in them to make sure they get automatically shut down if they do start to feed back. In order to make sure that these anti-feedback systems don't get tripped accidentally, make sure that the outdoor antenna and the indoor antenna are at least 15 feet away from each other. In early 2014, the FCC changed the rules for cell boosters. There was a lot of confusion as to how they were used and what they were going to be used for. And prior to 2014, the cell companies didn't even believe that they worked. At least that's what they said publicly. The FCC came out with new rules in conjunction with what the booster makers had in mind that meant that cell boosters would be recognized by all the major carriers and that it would be fully legal to operate them within the guidelines that were there. These guidelines are very simple. 
You must register your cell booster with your provider. You must use the cell booster the way that it was supplied to you in the kit that it was supplied to you. And the carriers have the right to ask you to take that cell booster down if they can prove, and they have to prove, that it causes a problem. Let's go through this again. If you buy a cell booster from Solid Signal, it is an FCC approved cell booster kit. And all FCC approved kits are pre approved by every cell carrier in the United States. Well, pretty much everyone anyway. You bring the kit to your carrier, you are required to do this. They make you fill out a form telling them what you got. And if you've got one of the kits from Solid Signal made by our partners at Wilson, Z Boost, or Cell Phone Mate, you're set. In fact, your cell carrier can't tell you not to put it up and they can't tell you to take it down unless they can prove that there's a problem. And none of these kits are going to give you a problem. In fact, there have been very few documented cases where there have been any problems with cell boosters. The next question, of course, is, is there a health risk of any kind when using a cell booster? Your average cell booster uses about the same amount of transmit power as a cordless phone or your wireless router. That's a very small amount of radio frequency energy. And to date, there have been no studies proving that this kind of radio frequency energy can be dangerous to you in reasonable amounts. Use care and use common sense here. Don't hold the booster up to your head for 10 hours a day, for example, and you'll be fine. We make no promises, of course, but going off the research that we have, everything that's available right now, there's no reason to be concerned. You can hire an installer, a home theater professional to put a booster in for you. An electrician can probably do it for you. But the fact of the matter is, if you can get up on a ladder, if you can use a screwdriver, then you can use a cell booster. Put it up all by yourself. Take some time and plan, and of course, use common sense. Don't go up on, during a lightning storm. Don't do anything like that. But you can feel comfortable as the average DIYer that you're going to be able to put this booster up. This concludes our presentation. If you have any additional questions, contact us at Solid Signal. Our address is right on the screen, or email us at info at solidsignal.com. Have a great day.